Hello, and welcome to Portland with Patrick. My name is Patrick Russell, and I'll be your host. Tonight's episode is part of a series about the arts and culture in Portland, Maine. When I first moved to Portland over two years ago, I was so excited to immerse myself in the thriving art community that's going on here. It's very exciting to meet all kinds of people that are doing things that they're very passionate and inspired by. Tonight, I have a good friend of mine on the show, and it is an honor to have him. Uh, his name is Anthony S. Marino and he is a very talented artist, musician, and author. Um, he's currently uh, performing in a band called Mama's Boom Shack, and they are playing shows all over town. Uh, you can currently catch them the last Friday of every month at Bolfini's. Um, Anthony is also in the middle of recording his second solo album on, uh, it's called Lo-Fi Nil. And that's just part of what he's doing right now, because he's also into art. Um, he has done, in, he's done work in New York, Florida, and Texas, and he currently has pieces being displayed in three different places in Portland. Uh, you can catch his work at City Hall, Constellation Gallery, and Space Gallery. Anthony, thanks for, for being on the show tonight. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah. So um, to start out, um, tell me how you got into to painting. Um, I started probably around 2003 and just there were some personal issues that I was going through and it was a good outlet for me to do it. So I just started painting on, on a whim, really. And it started, you know, slow, rudimentary and stuff and slowly evolved and concentrated on oil and it's progressively getting hopefully better. Yeah, Hopefully. yeah, definitely Be better enough. than getting worse, right? Right, right. Yeah. So, so. your stuff is um, really different than, than a lot of what I see around Portland. Thanks. That's um, cool. Uh, tell me about the, the, like, specifically the medium that you use and, and how you create your, your pieces. Well, I found that I like to work primarily in oil. Um, it takes a long time to dry, but it, I just find it easy to work with. A lot of people work in acrylic. Um, I wasn't really, s I've only done one piece, which we'll look at later, but um, I've only done one piece in acrylic. Um, oil just seems to be my thing. I, I don't know. I just really like it. Yeah. Um, and I've been experimenting in different styles, different, you know, techniques and, and whatnot. So I've kind of got a mixed bag of styles or pieces and you'll you'll see that some are really complicated and some are real simple. Yeah. Um, it just really whatever happens really. Yeah. Yeah. So great man. Yeah. Um, so tell me about the, the creative process for you for when you're creating a, a piece. How does it where does it begin? Where does where does it come from? Well I always have an idea of what I want to do. Yeah. And so I'll start to do that and it never turns out that way, ever. You know, I'll start something and I'll be like, it's gonna be this great piece and, you know, my genius will shine and then it's like, that's really bad and I'll just change it up. So what I usually envision happening turns out on the total end of the spectrum. Yeah. <laughs> you know. You never know where, where it's gonna no. end up when you start. No, and some, I've had some happy accidents where I was like, oh wow, okay, well, don't touch it. Yeah. Leave it alone, and 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 it en will end up totally not what I expected. So is that stressful for you, or is it no therapeutic? It, it's good because you don't have a formula. You know, like I don't have a, a specific style that I always like. A, I, I've seen some people that stick within a, a certain thing that they have, and I, I try not to do that. And you know, some pieces are stronger than others, admittedly, yeah. you know. Um, but it usually ends up kind of like what I like, you know, what I like to see and, and the end result is. Yeah. And, 
you know, you get to a point and you're like, no, I'm not, that's fine, thanks. I'll just put that on the wall or in the corner. And yeah, yeah, it's all part of the process, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So. Um, so you've done, you've been all around the country with your art. Uh, what do people in like New York or, or Texas, what, what do they think about Portland when you tell them that's where you're from? Well, it's interesting because Portland is getting, uh, has a, a really good reputation for art. I mean, if you look around, I mean, there's so much here, and there's so many different styles. You know, you have your touristy kind of stuff, and you have, but then you have stuff that's to, you know, to the extreme, and multimedia stuff, and I, I think it's a really thriving community. I think it's great. Yeah. And it's, and, and it's nice to break into that, and to kind of get in the mix with all of that, because it, it's, it's, I think it's, becoming very well respected. Yeah, I, I mean, I can feel it even since I've moved here. Things yeah. are, I mean, things were, were really going good when I first moved here, but it's just, even in like two years, it's really taken off even more. Yeah, and there's so many really good galleries around. You know, s little small ones and then the, the higher end ones or whatever, you know. Yeah. I mean, there's something for everyone, you know. And that's the great thing about art is if, if you like it, you like it. If you don't, yeah. Don't buy it. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If it's not for you, yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. So, and I've seen so much stuff where I'm like, wow, that's amazing. You know, yeah. <laughs> really cool stuff. <laughs> so, um, so tell me more about your shows uh, that you have going on right now. Or they're going to be tomorrow, right? Uh, tomorrow is kind of uh, at um, Constellation. Is yeah. I just actually was fortunate to rent space there and it's a great spot it's in a great location um, the people are really nice you know it's a nice laid-back environment so I have a little space where I can work and what they do is they allow when say for like the um, first Friday um, people can just kind of wander around and they can visit the little cubicles where people are working and have works in progress and so tomorrow night they're gonna open the doors up uh, kind of one night before the, the uh, art walk yeah. for Friday. So it gives people a chance to come in and kind of see what's going on there, and then they'll be open for the art walk too on Friday. Yeah. yeah. Cool, yeah. Just look at my notes here. Okay. I have all kinds of questions That's I wanted okay. to ask you. Yeah, um, sure. So there's a lot of um, there's a lot of young artists in, mm -hmm. in Portland. I mean, some people just starting to go to school and, and want they have mm -hmm. a dream of making a career out of art. Yeah. What's your advice for, for someone just getting started? That Find your own style. Seriously, you know, don't try to emulate other people's stuff. Uh, that's the thing, you know, when you go to school and which I, I feel kind of good about my stuff is I'm not really influenced by other people because I didn't go to art school. So I just kind of wing it. And I, there's a really freeing aspect about that because y you're not worrying, well, do I look like so-and-so? Yeah. I mean, you get compared to other people. You know, it's like, oh, your stuff looks like, you know, whoever. But um, the, the, I think the key is to just really develop what you want to do. I mean, I do what I want to do. And if people like it, that's cool. If they don't, there's a million galleries in Portland with stuff that I'm sure you'd like. Yeah, yeah, you know, and and it, like I said, it's it's free. I mean, it, it's a nice feeling not to have to worry about, am I going to sell a painting or, you know, what do people think of my work? I honestly really don't care. Yeah, is, is that a bad thing? No, no, yeah. that's. I mean, that's. I don't know. That's where some of the best art comes from. I think so. Yeah. I mean, you so you create your paintings for for you primarily. Mm -hmm. Is that is that what you would say? Yeah, I mean, it, it's really. It, it's kind of the, my thing is what I would like to see on my wall. Yeah. I'm not saying that my stuff is great or better than anybody's, you know. I yeah. mean, it's just what I would like to see. And it's kind of like music. Um, you know, you create what you kind of hear in your head and, yeah. and put it out there. And if people like it, that's cool. If they don't, that's fine too. And that's kind of where I'm at with it. Cool. Yeah. Hey, well, um, Let's look at some of your, your pieces, and I'd love yes. to hear um, okay. the story behind some of the Stories, yes. Yeah. Okay. 
So, uh, so yeah, tell me, this, tell me about this one. This, I, this is my most recent piece right here, actually. I finished this about two months ago, finally. Um, and this was a prime example of I was going to create this really fabulous work of art, and no, nah, it wasn't going to happen. Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't going to happen. So I started just doing what I wanted to do, and, and most of that was actually done with um, a technique using scrunched up paper towels. Really? Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, don't ask me why. Yeah. But uh, that's how you, I uh, got the swirly kind of stuff, and um, some people say it looks like space, and some people say it looks like clouds. I don't know. Space, I mean, I, don't, yeah. I never title my work. Because a, a thing with me is, you know, if you title something and call it, you know, whatever, um, I think it influences the way people look at it. Whereas if you just like slap untitled number thirty-two or whatever, yeah, um, people will see stuff that I didn't intentionally put in there or whatever. They interpret it their own way, and I think that's really cool. That is, yeah, yeah. It's like you don't maybe you don't know where it comes from. Someone mm -hmm. might identify something that you yeah. didn't even know was... Yeah, I know. mean, I've done other pieces where um, there's probably one, actually, if you want to go to the ones, this one right here. Yeah. This one is actually on display um, at Portland City Hall for, from the 2nd to, the, I think, the 15th. Yeah. It's part of a, a show that they do, um, I guess, every year. And um, this was a prime example of, I just... That was the one where I told you about my long weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's all we'll talk about. All <laughs> right. But yeah. anyway, um, this is what came out of it, and I've had pe uh, several people be like, "Oh, I see this," and I'm and I'm like, "Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah." It's nice. exactly <laughs> what I was going for. Yeah. <laughs> so, and this is kind of the style that I've started to go into. This is a recent piece. This was done um, the same weekend. Yeah. Um, and it went really fast, and it was a technique of just, um, you know, palette knives and scraping and layering and taking stuff off and finally getting to the point where I'm like, you know what, that'll work. Yeah. That, that's fine. So how do you feel about that when, like, creativity strikes at certain times, like, so much, but then do you have periods of, of downtime, oh, too? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, it, and it, it's interesting because I write that way. I'm kind of a lazy writer, and but when I write, I write in flurries. Yeah, and I do the same thing with art, and actually with music too. I, I go through phases where I just want to get this done, and then after that, it's like, okay, well, on to the next. Yeah, um, but yeah, I usually work in, in small increments of time and just churn stuff out. It, it works for me. Some people take, you know months and months to create stuff and I don't know. Yeah, it's like it's being created even when you're not realizing it. Yeah. In between. Yeah, I mean, I've always got something going on in my head. But that, one, that one's really cool. This is, uh, we were talking when we were having coffee, this is yeah. the one that I get the most requests for to, like, copy it or make one like that. Yeah. Uh, that's in actually in New York right now at a very prominent psychiatrist's office or home or something, um, and I gave it away. <laughs> you did? <laughs> I oh, did. man, wow. I did. It was a gift. That must have been tough to part with. Um, yeah, it, w it was. Uh, well, it wasn't at the time, but now yeah. that I look at it, I'm like, why did I do that? <laughs> but, um, and I've had people ask me if I could um, kind of reproduce it, and I'm like, I don't really remember painting it that much. Yeah. I remember part of it, but... About it. It's real. It's from within. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I've never really done something similar to it um, after that. This one is actually my brother owns this one. Yeah. Uh, this is a uh, my gift to him for all his hard work of trying to promote my art. Oh, good. And yeah. um, like I said, I don't title these things, but he actually titled entitled. He said it reminds him of Laffy Taffy. I don't know. Understand that, but. Mm. You know, but because it's really thick and it's really chunky, and it looks like big pieces of taffy just stuck on there. Yeah. And I painted in this style for a while, 
Um, I'm not really sure why, but it takes a lot of paint. And Looks, it, yeah, I can see the, the, the texture on it, yeah, the, just in the picture. Yeah, it's yeah. like three quarters, almost sometimes to an inch off the canvas. Wow. Yeah. yeah that's real thick. Yeah, yeah, and it's really heavy. In, um, I went through a lot of paint on that one, and it's pretty big. I think it's three or four feet high. Yeah. Um, but that was my Christmas present to him. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. Little. There you go. Nice. Good, good family. Yeah. 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 This one, rather similar to the last one, um, which is kind of why I, I found myself wanting to get out of doing these. Um, I had a lot of re commissions for these, actually. Yeah. And um, but I, I just kind of wanted to move out of that. But that's actually in a recording studio in Manhattan. And it's really cool because they had put it right in the front door. So when you walk in, it's like nice. right there. And it's like, nice. Very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was nice. Uh, some very dear friends of mine actually have that. Cool. Yeah. This was actually one of the first ones I ever did. And um, it has the nickname. It's not officially the title of it, but it's entitled, uh, well, loosely entitled Madness. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but it's really small. It's only about that big. Yeah, I can see that, the canvas. Huh? Yeah, yeah, it's really tiny. And um, that was a gift, too. It's with me giving away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and this one um, was an earlier piece. And I painted this r rather quickly. And I, I just thought it was yellow stuff. It was like, oh, it's yellow and purple. And my friend uh, Bill was like, oh, it's tulips. It's the life and death of a tulip. Yeah. I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, look. See, it goes in succession and then it dies. Oh, oh yeah. Like, yeah. Yes, I meant to do that. Yeah, of course, right. That's exactly <laughs> what I was trying to do. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And this piece was a very simple piece, really quick. Um, it was actually uh, a friend of mine asked me to paint it. And that, at one time, was hanging in Manhattan at uh, American Federation of the Blind. And it's a big piece. It's about three four feet wide, yeah. about maybe two or three feet high. I forget, it's been a while. But I don't know if it's still there. I hope so. Uh, hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully. And this one, when I was talking about um, how I work in just oil, yeah. this is the only piece I ever I have done in acrylic. And, um, and the only reason I did it is because I couldn't afford to buy oil. Yeah. So I bought acrylic. <laughs> yeah. So I started working in acrylic, and I'm like, no, it's not happening. It's not the same. No, yeah. but it was fun. I took it, that was, it was, it's really meticulous because I took the edge of a palette knife and I kept dipping it in the acrylic and then I had to put it on the canvas and just dab it on there. And it, somebody said it reminds me of a party popper. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. I could see that, man. Yeah. Yeah. So. This one is actually more, um, where I'm at now. This one is also going to be on display at um, Portland City Hall. Yeah. And this, that one was done rather quickly that at that same time period, that weekend, that I had that flurry of activity. I think I did three or four paintings and um, scratched a lot of it. And um, some people say it looks like a city scene. I don't know. Yeah. You don't need to? No. <laughs> no. And that's a portrait of my son, who passed away. It's beautiful. Yeah, that's my favorite piece. Yeah. It took me about a half hour to paint it. Yeah. It just went so fast. And um, yeah, I'm really proud of it. That's yeah. hanging in my living room. There's three pieces that I'll never sell, and that's one of them. Yeah. That's, that's one of them. Definitely. And that is actually uh, one that I'll never sell it to because um, that was directed by my son. I was painting this um, when he was still with us, and um, he was sitting in a chair, and you know, I'm painting, and I'm thinking, "Wow, this is really cool." And I said, "Well, what do you think?" And he's like, "That's terrible." He's like, you need to do this, and you need to do that. And so he told me how to, what to paint and what colors to use. Yeah. 
And it's basically, I, I probably shouldn't admit it, but it's basically a giant finger painting. Yeah. Uh, no shame in that, right? Yeah, I mean, it, <laughs> there's cool. really no, you know, prestige or mystique to it. It's just, but I'm, I, I, it's one of my favorites, and actually it's Mina's favorite. Yeah. Um, because it means a lot to me. It, it really does. I like it a lot. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and there she is. Yeah. <laughs> That is uh, actually, I've only done two portraits since I've been painting. Yeah. Then one of my son, Liam, and this one of Mina. And this is pretty big. It's like four feet wide and I think three feet high. And it's her lounging on the red futon. Oh, man. Yeah, the, which is in my apartment. Exactly. So, yes. Yes. So <laughs> nice. you, have a bit of, you have a bit of history I in do. your possession. Yeah. Yeah, and you remember the color of my apartment wall? Yeah. And this is the sun coming in, yeah. and this is, uh, the detail in it, if you see it up lot, uh, close, there's a lot of detail in it, um, like on her back and stuff. It, it was really, it, because I'm used to just doing abstract stuff, Yeah, it was really interesting to get into doing an abstract portrait. Yeah. But it came out, it, it's, I like it. I don't know. I think yeah, it's pretty cool. I like it too. Yeah, yeah, and that's one that stays in my collection. Yes. But the rest <laughs> they can go. Yeah. A little, they can just go wherever they want. Oh, yeah. That's great, man. Oh, well, thank you. Oh <laughs> yeah, no problem. Yeah. So, um, so maybe uh, change gears a bit and tell okay. me, uh, tell me about your music. Ah, well, um, the Lo-Fi Nail project is my latest project. Um, I had an earlier project which is actually named after Liam, called Liam Said. Yeah. And it was basically just jangly pop music. Kind of, you know, just kind of happy music. And then from there I evolved into um, transitioning from a drummer to a guitar player. But I'm playing drums now again, so it makes no sense. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> um, the lo-fi nil stuff is, as you know, very melancholy, very, uh, it's interesting because you know when you put your music up on all these websites, they s you know describe your music in in like one sentence. If you're in an elevator with someone, you have one sentence to tell them about your music on the way up. So my music is this project is music for sad people. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, and you've heard the record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it's appropriate title. Yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah. But I'm currently working on the follow-up to that, which is actually going to be a little more upbeat, because that one was very, that was a tough record. It took me three years to make that record. Yeah. And, you know, admittedly, it, it's a lo-fi project, but I'm very, very proud of it. I'm not the world's greatest singer, but there you have it. Yeah. No, there's no auto-tune on that record. The, right, no. right, just the real, the real Anthony. Yeah, 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 but I'm very proud of it. Um, it flows very well. I think um, it tells a you know, specific story, which you know. Yeah. And, um, but it's a short record. It's, what, 32 minutes long, I think? Yeah. But this one um, is um, starting to take shape, kind of like that one, how it flows in succession. And some songs, um, I mean, I have one song that's 15 seconds long. And then I have one that's you know, six minutes long. Yeah. So they all, they're all little like vignettes. Um, and I was going to uh, push this n first single actually um, this week, but I got so busy with all the art stuff yeah. that I'm like, well, I have to change my post on <laughs> Facebook, and you know. <laughs> and, but I w hopefully next week um, I'll have something f uh, final mix and, and mastered. And um, it's it's uh, it's a song. F it's a song for me now. Yeah. <laughs> Which is a first. Yeah, yeah. That's a first. That's great. <laughs> yeah, and then, um, and there's actually a pop song on it. Really? Yeah. Um, yeah. A <laughs> happy song. Changed up from the sad uh, songs for sad people a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one actually has a, um, a, a three minute, 30 second pop tune on it. Yeah, so I look forward to hearing it. Yeah, yeah. 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 We'll, we'll get you a copy. Uh, and tell a new me. T shirt too. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, tell me more about the band. Uh, uh, what, what Boom Shack? Like? Yeah. 
Um, Mama's Boom Shack came out of uh, uh, my cousin Todd. Um, we were having coffee. Uh, I hadn't seen each other for a long time. And he's like, I want to start a band. And I'm like, uh, no, I don't. Uh, I've been doing that for a long time. I really wanted to get out of playing drums. I hadn't played drums for a long time. And I was like, yeah, OK, whatever, you know, thinking, well, it was nice having coffee, and we'll <laughs> not talk about this again. Yeah. So he dragged me in to play drums. And um, it started off as um, just getting together. And now it's turned into, I mean, we have trombone player, two sax players. My cousin's basically the front lead singer, and he's a great front man. He's just, he's great. Um, myself on drums, uh, a whiz kid, Sam on guitar, a young kid. Uh, he's 21, and he's a great slide player. Yeah. Oh, he's just fantastic. And his dad plays bass, John. And um, it, it's really, it's fun. It's turning into a party band. It's like, you know, if you want to go and have a good time, get funky. Yeah, uh, come yeah. come see the Boom Shack. I'm down. Yeah, because it funky. it's turning into when where we play, it's kind of turning into like a, a party. Like that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. well, <laughs> Friday night was interesting, very interesting. Um, but yeah, it's, it's turning into like we're turning into a party band, and yeah. that's cool because it's fun. But like the Bolfinis gigs, they're long. Yes, they're, they're killers. I bet nine thirty to one in the morning. Man, it's brutal. Yeah, I, I get done and I'm like I. Just want to go home. Yep. <laughs> go to sleep. <laughs> you know. That's so it's doing very well. Yeah, it sounds it. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Um, so tell me how your art and music work together, or if, are they totally separate for you? Um, the lo fi stuff in the art is very intertwined. Um, I find with the the art and the music, it, it really is dependent on how I'm feeling. And as you know, I'm a rather melancholy person. Yeah. Um, so it, it definitely both kind of bounce off each other. Um, but it's interesting because um, I think in the last thing we were talking about that you did with me yeah. is I've had people say, you know, your art has evolved into more, you know, less gloomy or less, in that, in more colors. In, in, in yeah. And I, I feel like my music's actually going in that direction, too. I do. I feel like it's evolving. I'm evolving definitely as a guitar player. Um, and I've developed my own style as a guitar player, which is, I think, the way to go. Nice. You know, I'm not the world's greatest guitar player, but I have my own thing. Yeah. And I think that, you know, I mean, that's the thing. When you hear certain musicians, like a specific drummer or a guitar player, and you're like, oh, that's Hendrix. You know, and uh, I'm certainly not comparing myself to, to any of those people, but, um, you know, developing your own style, I think that's where you finally settle in and you feel good about the creative process and what you do. And that's great. Great yeah, advice. And that's the way, yeah. I, yeah, I feel that way with my music, and I definitely feel that way with my art. I mean, I definitely have my own style of art, and I got a really nice compliment. Um, the other day that um, s said that your art is so different from what we've seen, you know, in this one specific spot, um, not in Portland, but in this one gallery. Uh, um, and I took that as a compliment. Yeah. And it was nice to have another artist that looked at my art and said, what planet did that come from? I'm like, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, making an impact, right? <laughs> I'm like, that, that'll that work. That'll work. Uh, nice. I'm, I'm good with that. So, yeah. Man, well, we're, uh, we're running low on time. Okay. I, wanna, I want you to <coughs> say, tell people how to find your art and music, promote yourself. Oh, okay. Yeah. Shameless promotion. Yes, yes. <laughs> absolutely. Um, my music can be found on my website, lofinil.com. Um, it's on iTunes and it's all over the web. I mean, if you Google it, you'll find it. Yeah. Um, and I have my own website there. My art is on anthonyesmarino.com that you can easily access. Nice. And um, it's also on Etsy. 
And it, what I do have available is at Constellation. Great. So come on down. All right. Yeah. Well, Anthony, thank you so much. It was, uh, it was great having you on the show. Yeah, thanks. Very inspiring. Thank you. And thank it's, you it's good to see your work progressing and, and yeah. getting out there. Yeah, it's great. This is great. I really appreciate you having me on. This is a great opportunity. I really appreciate it. All right. Okay. And uh, to those of you watching the show, I hope it was informative and inspiring. And if you've never been to Portland, I hope you come check it out here. If you live in Portland, I hope you continue to immerse yourself into the wonderful, thriving art community that we have here. Um, check out future episodes, and uh, have a good night.